So, here we are, part five. This is the exciting bit, because hopefully this is going to be the final episode and we're going to bring the whole thing together. What's left to do? Just checking that the other camera is working still. What's left to do, of course, is the river and the water as it flows down over the rocks. It's certainly a challenge. Every water painting that I've done recently has been a challenge and has probably been one of the most enjoyable things that I've done for many years when it comes to painting. Because you can't just sort of what you can't do is go, I know how it looks, this is it, I've just painted it, there you go. Which to some extent, if you were doing an orange or an apple or some grapes or whatever, you get to, or even a portrait to be honest, you can go, yeah, I know how to do this and here it is. Bump, 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 bump. And I do know what I'm talking about with this because for quite a few years, back in the late 80s, early 90s, and then a few times since as well, I spent months of the year sitting for hours and hours and hours on the streets of Derbyshire and Yorkshire and Staffordshire, actually, and Cheshire. Of course, I got a bit of it, didn't I? Anyway, sitting there, drawing people's portraits. I was a street portrait artist, a lightning portrait artist. And literally you got so many people, one after the other after the other. On a good day, well, my best day ever, I did 28 people in one day, one after the other, which is a lot of people and a lot of faces and that all those together over the years that I did it and the hours and hours and hours of sitting there doing faces I reckon that to some degree I could teach a monkey how to do it <laughs> because it became it became a routine I could sit there, I looked at the face, there's an eye, there's an eye, down the bridge of the no uh, oh, the eyebrows, eyebrows down the bridge of the nose, bit underneath the nose, down the nostrils, line between the lips, line under the lips, formulaic. It worked and they were nice portraits. People loved them. Um, the reason I kept doing it was because it was so successful. People just loved to actually sit, not only to, have, to sit and have their portrait done, but they loved to watch it being done. And so, that formulaic thing is is something that it does happen. We we do it. We do it. We know that's how that looks. That's how that looks. Water, to me, is different because it, it's never the same. It's never the same twice. It's never the same from one minute to the next. From one second to the next. It's constantly moving, constantly changing, and that's the excitement. That's the interest, and that's what I'm about. So, to battle with here before your very eyes as they used to say uh, in um, the old uh, variety days of the magi stage magicians and now before your very eyes and that's what we're going to do I hope it works don't you let's see let's see what's going to happen let's see we only have three colours on the palette at the moment we have French Ultramarine, we have Lamp Black, and I am mixing some French Ultramarine and Lamp Black together at the moment to create a dark bluey black. And we have a 
good old titanium white, lots of it. And so we're going now to put in the water. Starting with laying in the darks into the rocks here. Not as dark as the original stuff that I did yesterday, by any means, but still fairly dark, but with a lot of the bluey grey mixed into it. It's going on fairly thin. And that's important because what we don't want is for it to be impossible to apply the water over the top of it without it all gunging together. So it's important that it goes on in such a way a fairly thin layer I'm being careful around this green because as soon as I get green onto my knife, I've got to wipe it off again because what we don't want is this palette becoming corrupt in any, in any way. So we'll wipe that off. And we'll put in some more of the Black and ultramarine marine mix down here. This is going to be these are rocks down this bit down the bottom. And then keeping it fairly thin. The, the levels coming down and so we want some bluey black across there and across there and then that should be just being careful here just to make sure I've got the right one here that should be the the next step it's flowing downwards and then above that we can see here at this level the same thing again this is the next step here I'm trying to scratch it and delineate it from the rock because we don't want it to look like the rock I want it to be a bit bluer than that as well and again coming down here, 
across here. And across here, that's it. I know it looks messy at the moment, and it's going to. It's going to look messy because what I'm putting in is a layer that is really going to be underlying what's going to go on next. Okay, that's here. We'll sort that out afterwards. The way that it mixes together there. We'll put a bit of blue on there. And then down here where's it we'll get more. to delineate the top of the that's it I'll do the top of that rock another one there in the water that's yeah that's uh, making visual sense to me if not, if not to you Hopefully it will make visual sense to you shortly. Right. Now then, now then. Sorry, we're not allowed to do Jimmy Savile impressions anymore, are we? Show me age there. What we're going to do now is we're going to try and bring in the water. Which of course is coming in here and flowing down, downwards. So we want to get a sense of direction to our brush strokes. Remembering that you can take off as well as you can put on and that you don't you shouldn't be afraid because nothing that you do is set in stone because you always have the ability to take it off anything that you put on and this is why I hope you can start to see why I left the I put the blue in the background here because as I'm putting the white over the top, the blue underneath is mixing with it slightly and showing through. 
And so rather than actually mixing the blue and the white together on the palette, which would just give me a pale blue, which isn't what I want, what we're doing is we're mixing them together as they touch. Where you want the real, so where the, where the water crashes down, that's where it forms foam, as you put it. And that's where it wants to be, the white wants to be at its thickest. that's where it all is splashing about and all the rest of it. Now here it goes dark so we can put in some black there. Scrape it off because underneath that there's a bit here where the water comes down through this gap here and starts to fall over the rocks again and all the time I'm trying to get that's it the motion into my knife strokes so that you get the feel all the time that this is moving. I hope you've been enjoying watching the uh, progress uh, of the painting as I've been doing it. It's, I know it's long and I know that's quite unusual in this sort of situation because we used to everything on YouTube, especially to some degree being, uh, what would I say, pint-sized, whereas this is more like a barrel in terms of length of time that I've been uh, painting. But I wanted you to be able to see the whole thing from beginning to end. And the whole thing from beginning to end doesn't happen straight away. It happens gradually. These things take time. You know, if, if I do all these in you know, the 20 minute slot that you, we always felt that Bob Slot was work, Bob Slot? Bob Ross was working in. Who yeah, was Bob Slot? Um, I don't know about you, but that fact that the painting only took 20 minutes, in a way, that devalues the painting in many people's eyes. It only took 20 minutes. Um, and the fact is that, like I was saying before, he did three to get that, and they probably took ages to... Um, to work out and work on so that he could reduce them down to being able to do them in 20 minutes. This, however, 
doesn't happen in 20 minutes. This takes time. And it's this element of time that we don't seem to appreciate nowadays. In many respects. It's this element of time that time being spent on things that is lost to some degree in this world where we want everything to be instant. And the fact is, some things take time. Paintings of any quality, I think, tend to take time. That's not to say that a plein air sketch done quickly can't turn out marvellous because it can. You've only got to see constables, sky paintings that he did just to, to see how wonderful they they can be. You know, I forgot to talk for a little minute or two then. I'll probably give you a little uh, rest from the sound of my voice. But was I talking? Oh, I know what I was talking about. I was talking about Constable Sky paintings. I don't know whether you've ever seen any of them. I mean, we all know Constable, don't we? We think we know Constable from things like the, the Hay Wayne and Flatford Mill and. Salisbury Cathedral and all the, the famous Constable big studio paintings, the ones that the ones that um, hang in the big galleries and you know a lot of them were painted for exhibition at the Royal Academy and you know, when you're painting it for the Royal Academy Summer Exhibition, especially in that era, you're talking about it started to come. Um, 
when you're talking about the Royal Academy summer exhibition at Constable's time, you're talking about paintings hung from floor to ceiling. And literally, the artists were competing with one another just to get any attention for their work whatsoever. If you hang a painting in one place, everyone will see it. If you hang it in another, it will just die a death. And and nobody will, will get to see your wonderful work. So, you know, those big paintings, painted by academicians, I mean, they get to exhibit without having to go through the selection period when they're members of the Royal Academy. Um, but they're still competing with each other because they're still competing with one another just to get seen, just to get their work looked at. I know I, I, I entered one of my paintings into an exhibition a couple of years ago. Nice exhibition. And I was, I, I got one in and I was so pleased to have got one in and I went along to the, to the private view. And then I saw where my painting had been hung and I was absolutely, I was so upset, <laughs> to be honest, it sort of spoiled the whole event for me because it was hung, it was quite a large painting and it needed a little bit of distance because of that. And it was hung in a, 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 a sort of corridor that they created that was about that wide and it was hung at waist height. And basically I could watch people just walking past and not even looking at it because it was hung in such a bad place. And I was, I was really upset, to be honest. Um, that's better. And uh, there we go. And and so you know they hang these, the kind of things like the hay wain and all these sort of things. They're meant to be seen. They're meant to stand out. But how did? Constable get to the stage where he could paint those absolutely gorgeous skies that he painted. Well, what he did was he went out into the world and he painted cloud studies for months and months and months. One after the other after the other. All on paper. In oils. But painted on paper. And nobody was ever meant to see them. It was constable studying the sky so that he knew how to paint the sky better than any other living artist at the time. And uh, you only have to look at his work to see that that, that was true. So, yeah, those cloud studies, I'd love one. It cost a fortune now. I'm not, never afford one in a million years. Um, but they were never meant to be shown. But the Hayway and Salisbury Cathedral and the Cornfield and all those others, they They took a long time to paint.
don't know whether you can see what's happening here, but as I've come to the fore, as I'm dragging down, I'm also letting the, the paint do that because I'm letting it blob. Because that looks, in my eyes anyway, like what happens when water falls from a great height. I think that's coming. I think that's really coming now. It's a steady process. Don't have to rush. There's no need to rush. Nobody is holding a stopwatch and saying you've got to paint this painting within so many. minutes, hours or whatever, you go at your own time, at your own speed. And if you notice, as I am doing this, I'm also occasionally digging the paint off again and letting the that dark layer that I put through underneath come back to come back into play. And scrape the paint off there. A little bit more of the white. And let it fall down. And let me take some off down here. That's better. And let's put the now down at the bottom here, just above this rock that's down the bottom. That's where where the, the water crashes down at the bottom here. And that's why we need such a big puddle of white paint. And if we just pull it up a little bit, we can uh, be careful here, keep the knife clean. Let it splash up. Let it, that's it. Uh, 
that's it. This is why the white comes last because the white, when you're putting the water on, is the is the the power of the water is in the white and the thickness of the white paint really really shows it off. Let's put in these rocks down here. particularly strong and delineated, it's sort of partly underwater, it's just creating a different texture at this point. And in a second I shall stand back. Evaluate what I've done. Okay. Well, it's time to stand back and have a look at it. It won't always all be working at this point. And this is the time to sit on your bum and evaluate. the studio up. Oh, actually, we're not looking too bad at all. Really not, I think. There are a couple of lines that are too um, sharp. Well, I think I'll get rid of. Yeah, this one here is much too sharp and wants to be wants to be sorted out. Also, there's a bit, let's go over to, I've still got the old palette over here. There's, this here is much too, let's darken it a little bit. That's better. That's it. That's pretty, pretty much what I want.
and the, the water, there's no understanding how the water is flowing down because this bit needs to be water too. It's a bit like icing a cake when it gets this thick. That's it. That's it. That's it. Also, this is too black. rock that's over here mm, let's take some of that off mm. struggling with this bit all of a sudden that's That's probably better. And, uh, you know, you start to see things. This is where you start to hold things together and make sure you've got things the way that you want them to be. back again. That's better. That's definitely better. I am really... I think I'm quite pleased with that. Maybe a, a little too light here. Maybe we need to just drop this. Back a bit. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice texture. I like that. I like that. Yeah, that's much better. Just break it up a little bit there. And maybe, maybe a few, oh God, it's going away. Highlights on the rock. Just to keep it a little bit fresher. Otherwise, it's a bit bland. And there's a bit here that wants to come up. That's better. That's better. That's better. And a bit of a something there on that tree just to pull it up that's nice that's nice otherwise it can end up being a little bit flat I don't know whether you we were talking a minute or two ago about constable and pictures like the hayway and uh, the big ones and if you've been to places like the National Gallery and 
the take, the take Britain and, and, and all that sort of thing where they've got the constable paintings and you get close to them there are these little specks of white pure white paint that fleck the painting they call it constable snow I believe that's what we were taught in art history lessons anyway and constable would just highlight things in his painting with these little dots of white and in a way that's what I'm just trying to do here is just bring out little glints that's it and what I'm able to do now because quite a bit of the paint that I put on earlier has now uh, dried to some extent I mean it's not totally dry yet it won't be totally dry for a while but it's dried to a level that I can actually put paint on and with a light touch it will catch on the upper surfaces of the paint that's already there and you start to be able to get much more natural textures coming out from it that's better that's much better I probably look like I'm fiddling now and maybe I am a little bit but this is the stage where you want to be sure that you've achieved what you set out to achieve and in many respects it's the difference I think between what I would consider as a professional looking painting in my mind a professional or an extremely good amateur a good artist let's put it that way the difference between an average artist and a good artist is being able to go that extra little mile that extra little bit of distance that makes your painting without going to the stage where you've gone too far and you've broken it and I don't think I've gone too far I think on the whole it's looking quite good at the moment a little bit there a little bit there there see I don't know whether you can see this but these textures now now that I'm working on top of paint that is solidifying I'm getting I can just being able to that's why I'm keeping going here I'm just being able to pull out some natural bits just to make it just look just that little bit more real I think I think I'd better stop I think I'd better stop I think I think that's it well I hope you've enjoyed watching that it's um, been an experience for me to paint for this long uh, and keep talking and keep thinking about keeping you interested 
um, uh, which I hope I have done. Yeah, that's better. That's better. That's better. Right, stop, Stephen. Stop. That's it. It's done. Let's uh, take this off and give you a, another look at it. And I will, of course, take a good quality still photograph and put it on there as well. But that's where we got to. Now you can see the picture above. You can see what I've painted. There are similarities, not, not exactly the same. It's based on it. But I'm quite pleased with that. It will now, if you're interested in buying it, it's for sale of course, like everything, uh, and it will be for sale under the Artist Support Pledge, and it is going on for just £200, and will be available straight away, although you will have to wait just for a few days for it to dry before I can post it. But it won't take long because, of course, it's alkyd. It, we've got an alkyd medium in there, uh, which will let it dry quicker. It's particularly close, and you can see the, so you can see the paint textures. There we go. And down the water. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching, and. Uh, I shall definitely be doing some more of these so please you know subscribe to my youtube channel please i'd love to see that figure go up it's been stuck there at almost nothing for so long and it will be lovely to think that people are actually uh getting notified and are actually watching what i'm doing when i'm doing it so please subscribe and when you subscribe hit the little bell icon and you'll be notified every time i put a new video on but until then, I would like to say thank you very, very much for uh, watching and have a good time as, a pos as you possibly can at home, staying safe, you know, get painting, get creating, get doing it yourself and realise that you might be staying home, but it doesn't mean that you can't travel in your mind just like this here, here am i and i'm there at that lovely waterfall i'd like to thank amber who put the photograph onto instagram and so kindly allowed me to paint from it and i will say bye for now and i'll see you again in the next video bye bye